you know, I can't. Uh, I can understand where the guy's coming from because if I was sleepy and and sick, I would feel the same way and probably make the same blah 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 blah. But at the same time, you know, a con is the time of ultimate fun, and no one should have to suffer except for the person who is you know doing badly. I mean, in terms of ultimate fun. Basically, the way we schedule Otakon, which is like the pinnacle of our year when it comes to the convention season, it's like there's all these little cons that lead up to Otakon. Then we usually spend the entire week after it at one of our good friend's beach houses recovering from the freaking convention. Mm -hmm. Like the day after the con, we pretty much just pass out for the whole day. Mm -hmm. So when deciding who to take with you to a convention, you want to bring with you people who are reliable they're going to pay whatever you know the cost is, and they're not going to be an anchor that drags you down and makes things unfun for others. Be and, especially wary of couples that are going through the throes of breakup. Mm, very dangerous. Yes. Uh, generally unstable people. You know, people who just, like Scott said, unreliable people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, bring as many people as possible. The yes. more you bring, the cheaper it will be. And at the same time, if you have a ton of quality people, that's how you get awesome, awesome parties and awesome craziness going on. I mean, this year we brought, what, 15 people, 16 people with us? Yep. And across two rooms we had like 16 people. And then we had like 20 other people scattered in other rooms. We had like this giant posse of doom. Mm, of course, posse. some people in the other peripheral groups had some drama. Which we'll probably tell that story at some point, either today or next Thursday. Mm, oh, that story, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of stories, because all our friends have drama. and we This know. is why conventions are so great, is because that's where you get all the stories from. Yeah, I'd say more than half of our stories are from conventions. And think about it, conventions, think about how much time we spend at conventions compared to time not at conventions. The fact that there's more stories there than anywhere else, that just shows you why conventions are so awesome. I mean, I guess if you've never been to a convention, the main thing about them is that like, look at your normal life. You maybe, you probably know a bunch of geeks around you, but not that many. And there's a lot of normal people in the way. Imagine if you were in a small town for a weekend, and the only people there were geeks. The only people there were cool people who are a lot like you and have similar interests, and you can just geek and yell and scream and, and dress up and do crazy things with no one caring. Mm, that, that's what it is. That's what it is. And that's why you can't let anyone drag you down. And if you're someone trying to drag others down, just just cut it out. I mean, if, if you're not having a good time, you're upset. Just, you know, yep. why? If you're trying to bring other people down, you're the asshole, not, you know, the people saying get away from me and not being sympathetic. Because we've had both types. I mean, we, we've had also, I mean, we had a friend once who came to a convention. She was having a really good time, but she actually got sick. Yeah, actually. Like, and there was, there was no fault of her own. She was sick. And we did, we did feel bad. But she was very, I mean, she did the right thing. There was nothing we could do to help her. So she stayed in the room and recuperated. And, like, we brought her food occasionally and made sure she was doing okay. But she went out of her way to make sure that while she was sick, she didn't hurt anyone else along the process. And that's the way to do things at a con. Yep, which brings back to bring quality people. If your friends are quality, they won't screw you just because they're having a bad day. Yep. All right, the next thing you got to worry about a con is registration. Yeah, now, basically, it used to be the conventional wisdom, and this is like only three years ago, if that, where you didn't want to pre-register because often the pre-registration line was slower and longer. Mm -hmm. Now, at least for anime conventions, this is not the case, and in fact, many of the big anime conventions sell out. Yep. Otakon sold out this year. Yep. So did uh, NekoCon... Uh, KatsuCon, it almost sold out. I don't know if it actually did sell out. I don't remember. A lot of cons are, are having caps on their registration because they're selling out. So pretty much if you don't pre-register, you're not you're going to have a very hard time getting in. And a lot of them have things like Thursday registration where if you pre-register, then you can get your badge on Thursday, which is a great idea. Even though you have to pay one more night in a hotel, you spend that many more hours having fun at the con. It's totally worth it. But you have to really... With registration, you have to consider two things. Pre-registration usually gets you a discount. You have to look at how big that discount is versus how much money you have. You know, if it's really significant to get that pre-registration discount, go for it. The second thing is how big the con is. If the con is crazy huge, pre-registration is probably a good idea. If the con is a little local con with, like, less than 1,000 people or so... It doesn't really matter. You just show up and you pay. Who cares? No one really does. Whatever. And 
Just make sure you do register. A lot of people, if you screw up registration, you could end up taking a long trip to nowhere. And that's never good. Yep. And in terms of registration, think about money. Because this all costs money, and you're going to have to, if you run out of money, it's bad. Because I, we actually ran out of money at a convention once. That's the, pretty much the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, the first Otakon we went to, we didn't really know what to expect. Because our first convention, our first anime convention, was OhioCon. And while I've heard OhioCon is a lot better now and is fairly awesome, when we went, this was like the worst convention ever. It was the first convention, anime convention I went to. And it was yeah, it was also the first terrible. anime con I'd ever gone to, too. And we went with a bunch of people. I think it was the second Ohio con ever. It was. And it, it's really hard to describe without going into excruciating, painful detail why it was so bad. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, we'll do a whole show on that Ohio con. Yeah, but, let, but let's just say that it wasn't a greatest experience. So when we decided to go to Otakon, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't think that Otakon would be as insane as it was. We had no idea. And we show up, and I spent, like, I had, like, $60 with me after the hotel, and I paid my 50 bucks for a registration, and I had $10 with which to live the entire weekend and cover gas home. Wow. Yeah. We drove home without the air conditioning on to make sure we had enough gas. Oh, is that the one where I got lost in the woods? Yeah, I fell asleep in the back of the car, and you were driving, and then I woke up, and you guys were in, like, the middle of the woods with an empty tank of gas, and no lights, no street signs. That was great. Yeah. See, what I tell you, we have so many stories just because of these conventions. Anyway, uh, the next thing is transportation to the con. Transportation is real tricky. Um, if you live, I'd say, more than five hours away, look uh, into trains and planes. If you can't afford trains and planes, you might want to reconsider going to this convention unless it's crazy huge and crazy awesome. Yes, I mean, people literally drive and fly and train from all over the world to Otakon. Mm -hmm. They don't come from all over the world to, like, Michigan. Yeah. So if you're flying eight hours to Michigan to see, like, 200 other people, you probably made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But just when you consider the distances, don't drive if it's too far because really no convention is worth the pain of that driving. Well, honestly, I mean, the furthest I've ever driven for a convention is I drove from Rochester, New York, to Chicago for Anime Central. It's not the, so bad. It took 12 hours because the car broke down on the way. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the limit. You know, and the con has to be pretty big to get you to do that. Yep, it was well worth it. We're going we're gonna to do a whole uh, show on stories from cons because I just realized how many I have. Yeah, I, I think we could probably do a whole bunch of shows and stories from cons. Now, if you're going to take a train, because, and this really only applies to people in the Northeast Corridor and Amtrak, mm -hmm. because in the rest of the country, as far as I'm concerned, Amtrak does not exist. It does. It's just slow and it's random. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Unless you live in the Northeast, like pretty much anywhere around D.C. or the New York area or Pennsylvania, Amtrak's fine. Anywhere else, no. Well, you know, you might, you, you might want to check it because sometimes you'll get lucky and there will happen to be a train that does exactly what you need. Like Florida to, I don't know, somewhere, you know, like North Carolina or something like that. Because there are trains that do that, but... Just check, and if there isn't a train that's, like, perfect, don't even bother. But the main thing with trains is to book, well, one, look at the websites constantly and book, like, seriously, six or seven months in advance. Mm. Because when we, well, the next year, time we went to ASEN, we decided driving is stupid. We're going to take Amtrak, and we took a 12-hour Amtrak. But it was only, like, 60 bucks because we got some crazy deal. Mm -hmm. If you don't get a crazy deal like that, you might be better off flying or driving. Yep. Flying is always real tricky because for a convention, you usually bring a lot of stuff with you and bring even more stuff back with you. And the conventions are never actually near an airport. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to note is that Otakon kind of is, is okay to fly to because they have a post office at the con and you can just mail things to yourself. So instead of carrying them home on the plane, you just mail your stuff home and then get on the plane with whatever you want. But most th that's very, very, very rare. And Otakon's the only con I know of that has that. So uh, don't, you know, fly to a con with uh, a bunch of crap if it's not really, really worth it. Driving's your best bet because you really want to bring a lot of extra stuff to the con just in case. Extra pillows, extra blankets, extra towels, which we'll get into when we talk about how to overstuff a hotel room. Oh, God. <laughs> I think that's next. <laughs> yep, yep. But transportation, most people drive to cons. And there are a number of things to be aware of. First of all... Once again, talking about reliable people, be real wary of who you're driving with and whether or not they're prepared to go. 
You got to make sure, number 